<laughs> All right, welcome back party people. Today we're gonna to talk about two reasons why your mountain bike hydraulic brakes are still spongy. And you know what I'm talking about. If you can pull those levers all the way to the bars, that's probably not a good sign. It is clear that during this pandemic, there are more beginner bike riders than I've seen in my career of mountain biking. And granted, that's not been long, but however, if you look at the inventory online of bikes and the inventory in bike shops of bikes right now, the inventory is probably the lowest I've ever seen it in my mountain bike career. And it's very evident when you get out on the, your local trails that there are a lot of beginner mountain bikers out there. So hopefully this video can help some of those newer mountain bikers that want to kind of save some money. This video is not going to be an in-depth on how to bleed your mountain bike brakes. I posted another video last year of 10 tips to help you have the very best brake bleed that you could possibly have. So we'll put a link in the description to that video and you can go back and reference that for all the details. So I was actually riding this weekend and I actually took a spill. The place we were riding at, it was really rooty. So I had let the pressure out of both of the tires pretty low so I could just kind of, uh, the tires would kind of conform over all the roots and the rocks in the trails. I was just kind of popping off some little bitty um, booster jumps. And the second one, for some reason, when my front tire hit it, the tire kind of deformed and it twisted my bars. And uh, well, let's just say, that was all she wrote because when I landed, because when the bars twisted, I kind of veered off to the side. And when I landed, I landed just on the side of the trail and the tire kind of rolled again and just washed out. Needless to say, um, that's when I noticed how bad my brakes were getting. This one goes all the way to the bar. And if we move over to our front here, not quite as bad. So I'll probably still change out the fluid because I haven't changed the fluid in this bike since I actually purchased it. Stay tuned, I'm gonna put you on time lapse while I set the bike up. So I was just getting everything set up and I noticed that I'm missing the little rubber cover over the bleed port here. So notice I've got the bleed block in place of the pad. So I put the pads out of the way so I wouldn't get those contaminated. Now I'm gonna tilt the bike up and we'll start the bleed process. These are SRAM code brakes and this is typically my setup. I usually just tie a rubber band around the syringe. Obviously I don't have any fluid in here yet so I'll take it off and put fluid in them. Just a minute, but SRAM has this neat little bleed port on the back and this tool that just kind of snaps in and then you can use your fingers to loosen the bleed ports. All right, so I'm just zooming in on the handlebar uh, to the rear brake lever. So I just use a, uh, an old GoPro mount and put a bunch of the extensions on it and a rubber band and that helps hold the syringe vertically. You'll notice for the back brake, I like to get the bike almost vertical because I'm not taking the actual brakes off the bike. So I want gravity to help me as much as possible. So if I'm pushing fluid from the bottom, to the top, I want gravity to help the bubbles kind of move toward the top. I am going to get fluid in these and start to push fluid through the system to bleed this rear brake. And that leads me into tip number one. Believe it or not, even when you get a new bike, they probably don't have the best bleed that you could get on your brakes. So I would suggest if you get a bike that is brand new and you have the capability and the ability to go ahead and bleed those brakes, um, maybe after a few rides, and uh, take your time and bleed them. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to actually bleed the brakes, but that is something that you need to take into consideration because typically what will happen is as you ride and perhaps as you store the bike, maybe you store the bike nose down, maybe you store the bike nose up, maybe you store it flat, or maybe perhaps you had a crash recently, all of those things can upset those bubbles that may have potentially been stuck. So sometimes what will happen is that some of those minuscule bubbles that are kind of sticky and they stick to the inside of the cables and maybe they stick inside different parts of the calipers and the braking system, uh, they start to collect, they start to form bigger bubbles. The next thing you know, it's 
more of a disruption within the fluid stream and now you have uh, what was once a small problem show up as a much larger problem now because when you pull the brake lever you're compressing a little bit larger air bubble so I'm going to do that now and then we'll bleed the brakes uh, I'm not going to go into the detail like I said but we will bleed the brakes and then we'll talk about reason number two you might still have spongy brakes So we've done our bleed on our rear brake and I've repositioned the lever here and now we have a super tight brake. One thing I would also mention too, if you have one of these adjustments here that adjust how far the lever is from the handlebars, crank it so that the lever is all the way out so you can get access to any trapped air that may be in the reservoir up front. So the second reason you still may have spongy brakes is air may be entering the system in an area that you may not necessarily be aware of first of all check your fitting at the brake lever and make sure that this fitting is not leaking brake fluid out you want to check and make sure that if you don't have a dust cap if you see a lot of dirt and dust being attracted to this area here uh, that's one sign that you have a leak there perhaps the crush washer did not get crushed properly or enough so it takes more to crush this crush washer than you actually think. So when you're installing these, or even if a bike shop's installed these, sometimes they may not tighten them down enough. And what happens is the crush washer doesn't deform enough to actually block the fluid from uh, reversing out. So you can try loosening it up a half a turn and then tighten it up a couple of more turns until it feels extremely tight. And that may fix your problem. Otherwise you may need to take this off and replace the crush washer. All right, so I like to do the same for the rear. So look at your banjo fitting here. Uh, just inspect all around and make sure that you have no leaks. Also, make sure that you're not leaking around the seals of the actual pistons within the caliper. That can be a source of problem as well. So I've also seen this happen before uh, on your syringes. If you're using syringes to do your, uh, your change, to make sure that your tubing is actually tightened here uh, there is a section here where your tube tightens on and this kind of compression fitting here make sure that that is tightened down make sure on the tube fitting to the syringe that you have a good o-ring seal here because that can also be an entry point for air and then also on your tip here make sure this o-ring is in good shape do not over tighten this it will deform to a point where it, it will not uh, seal air out also if you buy this uh, particular bleed kit it comes with extra o-rings and uh, if you find yourself in a pickle you can always order one of these o-ring kits uh, readily available off of amazon in various sizes here so keep that in mind the other thing too is when you fill these syringes up you're going to get some air you want to make sure that that air for example let's uh let's do a test Fill on this syringe here. So when I'm when I'm filling this syringe up and pulling the fluid from the bottle, got it clipped here. When I'm filling the syringe up, the thing that you're going to notice, I'm trying to be careful here because I don't have my gloves on. But the thing you'll notice is you're going to have some air bubbles in it. So you've got a lot of air here, and you've got some air in the tubing as well. So the one thing you want to do is make sure you flip the syringe upside down and make sure the air gets trapped up here between the stopper the plunger and the fluid and then give it a couple of pushes down to make sure all the air has escaped out of the tube and then once you've done that you can actually clip the tube here and that will keep any air from reversing back in and the whole point of the system is to make sure none of this air that's up here actually gets into the system so you want to have enough fluid in, in to ensure that you don't get to a point where you plunge this air through the system so that is the second reason your brakes may be still spongy. You may either have a leak or you may be injecting air into the system unknowingly. 
All right, so we've got everything bled now. We've got great braking on both the front and the rear. Took it out for a little test ride there, so I think we are ready to ride. All right, so in conclusion, short term, the enemy of your braking system is air. So air is compressible, so if you reach for that brake lever and it's a little bit spongy, you likely have some air trapped in the system somewhere. Long term, water is actually the enemy of the system, so therefore you wanna make sure you bleed your brakes at least once a year all right and i know it's probably not the first time you've heard this but only about four percent of my view time is from actual subscribers so if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to the channel please consider doing so make sure you click that post notification bell you get notified of all new uploads until next time let's get up and ride then up and go